Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks. But today's episode is going to be a Commander Quick Take. On episodes like these, I give you my initial take on a newly spoiled Commander from an upcoming set. I'm going to talk about a potential direction for that Commander and possible cards that you can use for that build. In this show, and episodes like this are possible because of viewers like you. So make sure that you like this episode, subscribe to the channel, and share it with friends. And while you're at it, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any episodes. You can also support this show directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without their support. Another way that you can support the show is by checking out our merchandise on thecommandersquarters.com. And finally, you can support this show by supporting our sponsor, TCG Player. So whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards, make sure you use our links below. But before we really jump into this, I just want to give a quick disclaimer. On episodes like these, they are just initial quick takes. This commander is just as new to me as it is to you. And because of that, I don't have a finalized deck built for this commander yet. So the direction that I choose to take this commander today might not be the same one that I do in a deck tech. And because of that, some of the cards I'm going to mention might not be in that deck either. Alright, now that we're on the same page, let's get into it. So today's Commander Quick Take is going to be on Morophon the Boundless. It's a 6-6 six, six shapeshifter with Changeling that costs 7. As it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. And then spells of the chosen type you cast cost Wooburg less to cast. This effect only reduces the amount of colored mana that you pay. And other creatures you control of the chosen type get plus 1 plus 1. First off, this card could be great in the 99 of a lot of tribal decks. Not only does it reduce the cost of your creature spells, but it also pumps them too. But there are definitely some tribes where this could be a very effective commander too. And the first tribe that initially came to my mind was dragons. There are many powerful dragons out there, and a lot of them are multicolored. Again, with this commander, the more different kinds of colors there are in a casting cost, the more they're reduced. The quicker we can get this commander out, the quicker we can reduce the cost of our dragons. So my first focus would be to ramp as quickly as possible so that we can get our commander out. We have access to green so we can use some land based ramp like Rampant Growth. And we'd also want some efficiently costed mana rocks like Worn Power Stone. And we can even use some cost reduction effects like Gore Claws. She has creature spells you cast with power 4 or greater cost 2 less to cast. So this not only reduces the cost of our commander but it also reduces the cost of our dragons even further. After we get our commander out it's time for us to flood the board with some very powerful dragons. Perhaps one of the biggest benefits for this commander is that it essentially fixes our mana by itself. Cyan of the Ur Dragon, Nivizit Reborn, and Okagachi Ventral Kami are very hard for most decks to cast. But with this deck Cyan and Nivizit are both free to cast and Okagachi just costs one. By getting our commander out early, we can really get ahead of our opponents quickly. There are plenty of other powerful dragons out there for us to cast as well, including ones that benefit our entire team. Jermoka the Eternal says, whenever a dragon you control attacks, bolster two. Kologon the Storm's Fury says, whenever a dragon you control attacks, creatures you control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. And then a Tarka World Render gives all of our attacking dragons double strike. There are plenty of other great dragon and tribal cards out there that we won't get into today, but I do want to go through one last thing. Cards like Fist of Suns and Jota Archmage Eternal work fantastically with this commander. Essentially, with either of these in play with your commander, all of your dragon spells are going to be free to cast. At $3.65 though, Fist of Suns would have already been hard to include in the budget. And right after this commander was spoiled, it's already jumped to almost $13 in price. So although Fist of Suns is no longer a budget consideration, Jota definitely is. This definitely looks like it can be a very impactful commander. And on top of that, it definitely can fit in the 99 of a lot of decks. But I really want to hear your thoughts on this take, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. Are dragons the right way to go, or is there a different tribe that you would pick? And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, check out some of our other episodes on budget deck techs, quest for quarters episodes, commander topics, and creators quarters. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.